just in a lot of secondary classrooms, so now I want to transform ourselves into my third grade elementary classroom. And I'm Miss Hex, you can call me Alex. Uh, my presentation is Let's Get Moving. Uh, that's why. Okay. So six hours, or 360 minutes, or 21,600 seconds, no matter which way you write it, a school day is a very long day especially if kids are sitting the majority of the day. Where it all began. So I stayed and taught in a third grade classroom at Bishop Elementary in Arlington. We actually have the next student teacher here. <laughs> um, in my classroom, you would find 24 students, one great mentor who was on the end, just kind of hiding behind the doors. And was one awesome classroom volunteer. The students were active, they were energetic, they were athletic, and they were hardworking. But something that I want you all to remember is that each student played or watched the sport that had a ball in it. You're not going to really understand that now, but you will in a couple minutes. So beginning of the year, I want you to picture your first day of elementary school. It could be any grade. How are you feeling? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you ready to go? Well, while you're thinking about that, listen to a little story about my first day of I remember I walked into the classroom and Miss Rogue Rogue had a board and it had happy and sad and it was saying, how are you feeling? And there were 23 happy faces and then there was one sad face and I was the one sad face because I didn't want to go to school yet. But that was not the case for my class. They were excited, they were ready to go, and they were very respectful. But did that last forever? Of course not. As kids become more comfortable in their environment, their behavior changes personality comes out more and they start talking to their friends all the time. So the students went from sitting on the rug listening to the lesson to squirming on the rug ready to get out of the lesson. They were listening to the teacher to having side conversations with their peers and they were listening to directions to having the teacher have to repeat directions because they were preoccupied during the lesson talking to their friends. So what did I do? Well as a student teacher my first semester is really about ob observing. You're teaching more and more as you're getting close to your second semester and as you're going to take over for those two weeks. So I was specifically looking for the time that the behavior was changing. And I noticed that my kids were getting a little restless mid-morning, but it was perfect because it was time to go out to snack recess. And they would go outside, get their energy out, and they were good to go to come back. They'd come back, we either have a special or then we would have uh, an hour of academics, and then we go to lunch. So morning worked out great. But then, when we came back from lunch, they were standing outside the classroom, jumping all over the place. It looked like a jungle out there. And then we'd come in, and it took 10 minutes to get them to back to their uh, to the rug spot and ready to go for the next lesson. So that was a very long time. So this led me to my research question, what effect do movement breaks have on student behavior? So what is a movement break? According to Responsive Classroom, which is a social-emotional curriculum in elementary schools, movement breaks are brief intervals that enable all students to move their bodies and help teachers to engage learners in physical ways. So a movement break can be stretching, it could be jumping jacks, it could even be breathing. So I figured, you've all been sitting down the entire <laughs> morning, we should try one out. So let's just stretch. Everyone just start stretching, breathing, just do a movement break that gets get to go in for the next probably six minutes that I have left. <laughs> All right, you keep doing it, I'm just gonna <laughs> So the process. So since my class was a very active bunch and I said that they all played a sport with a ball in it, I knew that silent ball, which was a movement break we played in my classroom, would be perfect. So we had silent ball for 10 minutes because I said that it took about 10 minutes to effectively transition them to academics. So they would sit on their desk, they'd enter the room, well first they'd actually go, Miss Hex screaming in the hallway. Miss Hex, we playing silent ball? I'd be like, obviously we're playing silent ball. <laughs> so they go, they sit on their desk, and we had a ball, very soft, squishy, and they'd throw the ball around. And if they dropped it, they were out, and they transitioned to their rug spot. And if they made any noise whatsoever, they were also out, and would transition to the rug spot. So as well, this was a movement break, but it was also a transition break. So the way that I collected data was I used a lot of video. I would record almost all the times we played silent ball. Took up a lot of space on my computer, but I loved it. <laughs> I'd then go home the next morning, or the next night, and I would write down my observations on what I saw in the video. 
but as well, I would also write my initial observations right after the game. So instead of collecting data on the entire class, I picked a focus group. And this focus group had four boys who were the most restless throughout the day, and I recorded observations before we played silent ball and after. So this data is what I wrote in my journal right after the game. So N, he was jumpy and does not seem to be focused on work. He was having side conversations with the girl next to him and the boy next to him. Teachers have to tell him to stay focused. On the rug, he talks to his friend behind him and has trouble sitting with a stool listening look, which is what we call having your body face forward, crisscross, and listening to the teacher or their peers. Jay, he was definitely our class clown, and he was very funny, but at very inappropriate times. <laughs> so he enjoys making his friends laugh and being silly, which becomes dis very distracting for the teachers during the mini lesson. He was constantly moving around, and the lesson has to be stopped to address his behavior. E was very disruptive on the rug and has a hard time staying in his seat. He gets up and talks to his friends around him, shouts out, and does not sit with a school whistle look. In fact, he often has his back face towards the teacher the entire, the entire lesson. <laughs> C talks to the students next to him and distracts other students. He's influenced easily by two other students. When they, were work, when they would work together, they were rarely on, rarely on track, and that was N and J, the two boys before. C is very jumpy and often asks for directions to be repeated multiple times because he struggles to keep his attention on the world. So now the game is in progress. And these were my <laughs> observations after Silent Ball. So N transitioned to the rug very smoothly. When he went to the rug, he was silently cheering for his friends. He sat in his rug spot and was attentive to the lesson. When I began the lesson, he sat with a school listening look and was far less jumpy than before the game. He did not talk to his friends, and when he was directed to go to the next activity, he transitioned very well. J, he transitioned to the rug nicely and sat on the rug patiently waiting for the game to be over. During the mini lesson, his distractions simmered down. However, they are still there, which is to be expected because we don't expect them to completely disappear. He began whispering his side comments instead of blurting them out, which is very interesting, and I don't know if there was a huge correlation to the movement break with that. But he moves far less than he did before, and his body seems to be calmer and more relaxed. With E, he transitioned nicely to the rug and has a smile on his face. And what was really interesting about E was that he would go in his desk, take out a book, go to the rug, and just read until the game was over. And kids would go over to him and he'd be like, no, I'm reading right now. <laughs> he then, so he seemed to be much more calmer and the outbursts were not as much as they were before the game. However, they were definitely still there. He still does not sit with a school listening look, but he is face towards the teacher. So that was, that was a win. <laughs> C transitioned well to the rug, however, he begins to start cheering for his friends, which is feeds the pur purpose of silent ball, but when he's directed, he stops. After the game, he sits in his rug spot and is attentive for about 10 to 15 minutes. He was engaged in the lesson and raised his hands to answer a couple of questions, and he was able to sit with a few results. So did the movement break work? Absolutely. <laughs> the four students all transitioned to the rug quietly and quickly. Their body seemed to be much more calm. They interrupted less, and they were not talking to their peers as much. My girl Meryl agreed with us. <laughs> so for future classrooms, I am definitely 100% going to use movement breaks. I'm going to be a lead special ed teacher next year, and it's going to be very important to use movement breaks in my classroom. But it's very important to find the movement break or breaks that work for your class. And since I knew my class and their interests were sports with the ball, I knew silent ball would be perfect for them. In fact, they never wanted to do anything else. And the last thing that happened was when I left my class, I was walking outside and the kids followed and they go, so Miss Hecht, who's gonna play silent ball with us now? And then my teacher like ran up to me and she goes, I play silent ball them all the time. <laughs> so yeah, that was my presentation. every day for once on Sunday. And we did it mostly for um, a large part of my takeover week, so that's when I really collected the data. And what time of the day? Right after lunch. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I'm interested because um, I teach first grade and I have the same problem. It's, I was wondering if you thought about movement breaks at different times mm -hmm. in the day, because something I, I feel like is the kids come in from recess and they're going like 90 miles an hour. and for me, my sense is it's less at that point in the day of a, needing a movement break versus needing a um, just a comp, like a, a movement from going 90 miles an hour yeah. to going. So I was wondering if you thought about doing silent ball at any other times of the day, or if you would do a different movement break. Yeah. So 
we definitely thought about using, me and my mentor talked about this, we thought about using it during different times, but we felt that because after lunch was such a hard time to get them ready to go, we felt it was perfect to do it then and it eases them back into, instead of coming into from recess and then just going right into the lesson, it eases them back. We did a couple movement breaks throughout the day where we would, you know, just walk around the school and you'd have to follow the leader, things like that, but I just found that during that time, it just worked best for my class. But not that wouldn't work probably for every class. Yes, did you try um, any different kinds of movement breaks? Yeah. Like, did you do any different activities? Yeah, so we tried, uh, I tested it out during like the first day of my table where we could play sound ball. And then I tried having the kids sit on the rug in a circle and they would all make different animal noises and it would sound like a jungle. We actually did that in our drama class this uh, year. And they lost their minds after. They were like, Miss Hecht, why aren't we playing sound ball? And they go, you're right, I'm sorry. I have never seen that again. <laughs> so they just, it didn't work for them. Yeah. Um, did your findings like for any of these questions be more research that you want to research further? Yeah, so the thing that I just want to research further is just finding if there are classes that can do different movement breaks and love it the way that my class loves it, or finding that one movement break and seeing if it works throughout the whole year. Because mine just worked for, you know, that short period of time that I was collecting data. So I'm curious to see if like that movement break would have lasted the entire year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested. So you did a movement break right after lunch and the results seemed great. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were more attentive or at least they acted more attentive, but as the, the afternoon wore on, did they kind of regress back into being more? Yeah, so we were actually lucky where lunch was late. So we would have the movement break and then we'd only have like an hour, hour and a half at most for the day. So we do that and then by the time we were finished with our mini lesson, they would only have about like 45 minutes left. So they were fine for the afternoon.